I made a model that may help you understand the brachial plexus, um, which is a, a bunch of nerves that comes out of your neck and goes down into your arms. And there's different places that this, these nerves um, can get compressed. This is showing you one side, this bright yellow is um, representing the brachial plexus. So you can see this is the cervical spine, this is the rib cage, just imagine. Um, and these blue lines are the cervical discs, the intervertebral discs. And so the nerves come out from in between there. They, that applies to the entire spine, but there's a certain area of the cervical spine uh, where these nerves come out, bundle together kind of, and then go down into the arm and into the hand. So if you have nerve problems like tingling or um, numbness, even weakness in your, even down into your hand or in your arm, um, it's probably coming from compression of these, this bundle or part of this, this nerve complex somewhere along the way. But there's a bunch of places that that can happen. Um, so technically the thoracic outlet, see this is, this is a hole, right? That's where the heart and lungs go. And then normally the diaphragm would be down here. So um, you have the sternum and then the ribs and then the spine is, is down through here. Um, and this top part is technically the thoracic outlet. There's a big hole there. It doesn't look like a hole because it's filled up with muscles and also the trachea would be there and the esophagus behind the trachea, you have your thyroid gland. There's a bunch of stuff filling this space up so it doesn't seem like a hole. Okay, and then the pink part, which you can see here, I mean the pink beige pink clay, this is the clavicle or collarbone, which is attaching the sternum over to the shoulder blade, scapula. And then you can see I made the scapula out of sort of the same color of clay and that's going around to the back. Now I wanted to show you what that looks like minus the rib cage. Um, so here's a little model of the scapula and it's, a, it's quite a complicated structure. And then the, this is the arm bone, the humerus. So you could say the socket where the humerus fits in is over here on the outside part um, of the scapula. And then this is the acromion process, which you can feel on the top of your shoulder. And then this is the coracoid process. So if you look at it from the side, um, can see this knob sticking out right here. And that's part, that's one of the things that can cause some problems with the brachial plexus. I'll show you why. Um, so tension in the shoulder blade, if your shoulders tend to round forward, what happens is um, this part rotates forward and down. And then if you have tight shoulders and they tend to rise up towards your ears, which is that they, those things could happen at the same time, this is a levator scapula muscle. Your, your um, shoulder blade is gonna get pulled up towards your ear like this. Anyway, over here, that same structure is in that dark pink color. So that's the scapula clavicle. And then if you see, um, there's some holes through here too. So if I tilt this up, you can see the spine and how the um, clavicle and the scapula also kind of form a tunnel. Now the pink pipe cleaners represent two muscle structures. So you have the scalene muscles, which are coming from the cervical spine to the top of the rib cage. And then you have this weird little, very deep muscle here called pectoralis minor. You don't really feel it or see it because it's covered up by this huge muscle, which is pectoralis major. Anyway, this little tiny muscle right here goes from 
that pointy thing on the front of the scapula down to the rib cage. And so usually it can help elevate the ribs, but it can also pull your shoulder forward and down. So you have a rounded shoulder posture. And the reason that's a problem is because the nerves, I'm gonna show you the ner where the nerves go. They're gonna go, this same bundle of nerves over here is on the other side as well, of course. And it's gonna come kind of in between the scalenes and it's gonna go down under the pec minor, pectoralis minor. And then it's gonna go down into the arm. So if these muscles get tight, the scalenes, what that looks like is if your uh, head is kind of pulled forward and down, um, or if you've had some injuries to your neck, these may get really tight, or if you breathe improperly, they also might get really tight because they help elevate the top of the rib cage. Um, or if you have lung problems, these muscles can get tight and compress um, this nerve there, this nerve bundle, sorry, it's a bunch of nerves. Um, or, and or, um, the, the brachial plexus nerves can get compressed under the pectoralis minor. If your shoulders are rounded forward and down, it doesn't leave very much space for those nerves. The last place that, um, well, another place that that bunch of nerves can get um, compressed and irritated is really in their origin. And that has more to do with the spine. So if you have any disc herniations in these little blue lines right here, and some of these discs are bulging out, maybe from a neck injury or just poor posture or something like that, usually it's from whiplash. Um, then that um, can also press on these nerves. So it can come from the spine, it can come from scalene compression, it can come from pec minor compression, or it can even be compression in the carpal tunnel, which is in the wrist, if you're having hand, nerve sensations in the hand. How do you know which one it is? Also, it could be all of them at the same time. That's not impossible. One way to know what's going on is when you have symptoms. So if you have something like um, when you uh, go into shoulder stand, let's say you're doing yoga, you do shoulder stand or headstand, and then it gets worse. You have some tingling in your hands, that's bad. That usually means you have disc compression and, and you might be making it worse by doing those postures. Okay, that's if you're doing flexion of the spine and, it, and it's making it worse. If you do extension of the spine, it's something like camel pose, for example, and then your hands go numb and you have tingling in your fingers, if you hold the pose for a minute or five minutes, <laughs> um, usually that means that um, it's coming not from the spine, but from um, tension in your chest or in your neck. And that's actually uh, getting better by stretching it. So then when you do your camel pose, okay, your hands feel tingly for a minute, but then you feel uh, maybe a sense of relief as soon as you come out of the pose, that's because you stretched some of these muscles and um, once you come out of the pose, you, no long, you have even less compression of the nerves. I hope that makes some sense. People often get afraid to do um, camel pose because their hands are tingly or because they have a lot of tension in the front of their neck. And, and it's not that dangerous of a pose, even though it feels dangerous sometimes. It's really not. Um, what's more dangerous is the forward flexion and something like shoulder stand or head stand, compression and forward flexion of, of the cervical spine, which can get make, make the nerve sensations worse. Um, I'll make another model later I'm working on it now, which will show you uh, why there's a difference between extension and flexion um, in terms of what it does to the nerve roots, okay? But pay attention to what you feel. Anytime you feel some tingling sensations, you should, you should try to figure out why it's happening. Um, 
arm and don't try, don't do anything that makes it worse if you're not sure what it is.